my name is John. Welcome to another SMC technical training video. During this video, we're going to show you how to rebuild a typical cylinder. We'll show you the tools and the parts that you need, and we'll share some tips to make the rebuild easier. Let's get started. We chose to use our round body CG1 as our example cylinder. The techniques presented here will apply to most rebuildable cylinders. The catalog can help you with various options. To rebuild any cylinder, get the operation manual so you can do the rebuild safely and properly. For most of our actuators, there is an SMC maintenance parts list on the web. It has part ordering info for the rebuild kits. These are the part numbers for our rebuild. Make sure you have the right replacement parts for your cylinder. These are the tools needed for the rebuild. Before you begin the rebuild, make sure that you understand the SMC safety instructions in the operation manual and follow local safety procedures and regulations. The first step is to place a mark across the rod end and the body to help ensure that when you put the cylinder back together, it is aligned. If you have auto switches on the cylinder, mark their position before you remove them. This will save time during reassembly. The CG1 has a rod end cap threaded onto the body. So, to open the cylinder, hold the head end flats using a smooth surface vise and support the cylinder near the rod end so that it won't move. Use a spanner or adjustable wrench to turn the rod end using the flats. First, do a general inspection of the parts. On the body, are there scratches, dings, discoloration, etc.? Is there a light and even sheen of lubrication on the inside of the body? Is the rod bent? or is the thread damaged? Next, check the seals. Is there uneven wear? Swelling, drying, cracking, flattening, etc. If there are any issues, then you need to do more than just rebuild the cylinder. Check out our web reference for troubleshooting actuators. First, remove the rod seal. The CG1 rod seal also acts as a wiper to remove light debris from the rod as the rod retracts. Don't scratch the cylinder. Inspect the seal for damage, hardness, or swelling. If none, make sure that the old grease has been cleaned from the bushing and the seat for the seal. Next, remove the body seal. Also, check it for the same type of damage. Then, remove the piston seal. Check it for damage as well. Next, remove the wear ring that keeps the piston centered in the body. Notice that the wear ring has a split in it. That's normal. Wipe clean the surfaces and the seats where the seals need to go. Make sure that the old grease has been cleaned from inside of the body. You can use a cotton cloth or swab. Get the new seals. The wear ring will come separately. Apply a thin layer of grease to all of the new seals. This makes them easier to install and helps the seal. Without stretching the O-ring too much, maneuver it into the groove from the rod side. Make sure it is not twisted. Cover the piston seal with a bit less than a millimeter of grease. Replace the wear ring, lightly greased. Replace the rod seal after filling the seat with grease. Use a cotton swab or cloth to remove the excess, but leave a little less than a millimeter of grease on the surface. Before installing the piston and rod, the body must be greased based upon the bore and stroke length as shown in the operation manual. Now put the lightly greased body seal in place. Make sure that it is not twisted. Thread the rod cap into the body. Make sure that the timing of the mark is from zero to plus two degrees of the mark you made earlier. Now you can return any auto switches to their positions using the marks you made earlier. Thanks for watching. Look for our other SMC technical training videos to assist you with your automation equipment.